at a couple of places along the journey, you were running out of money, you were behind schedule, you know, a lot of things, and you were considering whether it's worth going on or not. And so if you'd chosen not to go on, or if you couldn't raise the next round of money, what, how did you think about failing in the business? You know, when I was in Lebanon in the first phase, failure was not even a conceivable option. Like it would have been so detrimental to my relationship with my parents, to the relationship with the press. Like back then, I was getting so much coverage because I was an Arab woman that was starting a company and the press like almost didn't care about what I did and where the product was at. It was They were fascinated by the Arab woman angle. In a tech company. Yeah, know, yeah. which was really funny because I always felt like, okay, I mean, it's not my fault. I'm an Arab woman or I didn't do anything to be one. Like, it's right. just who I am. Um, but, you know, I was getting so much coverage and attention because of that. And it kind of made me feel like an imposter a little bit where, you know, I was struggling with so many problems. Um, and I wasn't, in my head, I wasn't able to live up to the expectation the press has set. And actually, people in a culture like Lebanon give so much attention to that, uh, to the press and to the status and to the show. So even when it came to my mother, actually, she was telling me things like, you cannot dress like this, you're a CEO, or you cannot buy this car, you need to buy this that's $10,000 more because you're a CEO, you can't drive a small car, or you cannot fly economy, you have to fly business class. And I'm like, mom, we're a startup, we're a few people, no, you're a CEO, you're the most powerful woman, I read it on XYZ. <laughs> so it was kind of like they had never even, I just couldn't, I just couldn't deal with myself going back home. Uh, to my family, to my friends, to the people who thought I was the most powerful woman uh, and tell them, hey, actually, it didn't work. And so that was one of the things that was driving my stubbornness. Um, the other thing was that we had taken money from a few thousand people in 56 countries and told them, we're going to ship you a product. And, you know, if I don't ship them a product, in a place like the US, it's called, oh, sorry, we're going to file bankruptcy and I'm really sorry for your money. In a place like Lebanon, they call you a thief. Mm. And like, that's the last, like I just couldn't dissociate my business and myself from these cultural aspects. Mm. Um, and so a lot of that drove my stubbornness, you know, and, um, and my shame. Like I felt that this was my commitment and my way to get out of that loop. Mm. Uh, and coming to the US, Obviously, these get dampened um, because it's a culture that accepts failure far more. Mm -hmm. uh, ev everyone has tried something and failed, and it's actually kind of celebrated in the mm -hmm. US where it's normal. And I've met so many people who failed to deliver on their crowdfunding campaigns, mm -hmm. who've lost hundreds of millions of dollars uh, when I felt bad about losing a few hundred thousand. Um, you know, so that, that kind of reset the bar a little bit by, by given my origins and background, it's very, very hard for me to detach myself from that and to actually find my self-worth beyond those external criteria. So what do you do when the downs and the challenges and so on are just beyond your control? How do you keep yourself healthy? How do you think about that? So I must say that it took me a lot of mistakes to learn to keep myself healthy so the first few years of the business i stopped doing sports i almost stopped swimming like every time the prototype would not work i would just avoid the pool and i stopped swimming i gained a lot of weight i was taking zero care of myself on top of that i was in lebanon where i had a big social clash with people there and so i kind of found refuge in working and so i had no social life as well so the first few years, I was still very high on the work itself. So that kind of sustained me and gave me an excuse not to be healthy. But when I had the first hit of like, I need to raise, uh, I'm out of cash, I didn't ship to these people, I cannot fail. So that hit was more than a professional one. It actually m made me like, okay, who am I? How can I take care of myself? And so at that point, I picked up running. And so I started running 
maybe running away from my pain, but I was running half marathons and marathons, and I found peace a lot in running. Um, I think there's a downside to being obsessive about an activity because that feeds the type A personality. So after that, I've learned to tone it down a little bit.